Okay, we have uh, a parallel plate capacitor, but uh, between the plates of the capacitor we have two different kind of dielectric, and they are sandwiched. They are parallel on top of each other, and the one of the uh, uh, dielectric has dielectric constant k1, and the other one has dielectric constant k2. The total distance between the plates of the uh, uh, capacitor is d, and the thicknesses of each uh, dielectric as d1 and d2. And if you apply a potential difference between the plates of this capacitor, for example, the uh, uh, upper plate has a higher potential, then we will have a positive Q uh, of the upper plate. And let's uh, define the area of one of these plates as A. And, of course, the electric field be, uh, inside these different directors will be different. Let's, let's call one of the electric field uh, as E1, which is for uh, the electric K1, and the uh, E2 is the for the second directory. Uh, remember, for a parallel plate capacitor, the electric field is just sigma divided by epsilon zero in between the plates, and sigma is just the charge density, surface charge density of one of the plates. It's just, for example, in here, Q divided by A. Uh, then in that case, if you put a different uh, dielectric material, then the electric field will be modified by sigma divided by epsilon zero times one over k one. So the electric field will be uh, uh, smaller than the electric field uh, which is in vacuum by a factor of uh, k one, and for the other material, the electric field will be expressed as sigma divided by k two times epsilon zero. So. The uh, next thing is, of course, we have to, uh, with this uh, configuration, we have to find the total uh, potential difference between the plates in terms of the electric fields and their thicknesses uh, of the uh, dielectrics. So, of course, uh, since the, uh, the potential is just a line integral uh, between any two points, then the total uh, potential difference will be E1 times D1 and plus E2 times D2. Because if you go from one point on the upper plate to the other point on the lower plate, then you will cross the first electric, which has a distance d1, thickness t1, by e multiplying its e1, you will uh, calculate the potential drop inside this first electric, and e2 times d2 will be the potential uh, drop inside the second electric. So the total potential difference may be expressed in terms of the thicknesses and the electric fields, inside these dielectrics. But what are these uh, electric fields? We have to be uh, more explicit. Uh, as I said, uh, sigma divided by k1 times epsilon zero is the electric field inside the first uh, dielectric. And if you multiply, of course, by d1, you will have the uh, potential difference just uh, between the points uh, of these, this first dielectric, between the point of the uh, upper point and the lower point. And sigma divided by k2 times epsilon zero is the electric field inside the second dielectric. And then comes to apply this uh, expression to the general uh, formulation of the capacitance. And the capacitance, of course, uh, the total charge Q divided by the total potential difference between the uh, uh, metal conductors. And, well, let's uh, express this uh, equivalent capacitor as 1 over C, and you will see why uh, I choose to express this uh, the total uh, uh, capacitance as like this. And of course, 1 over C will be V divided by the total charge of the one of the plates. And let's express this uh, explicitly. The total charge is that just the uh, charge density, the surface charge density times the one of the area of the uh, plates. And this will be multiplied by this expression that we have previously uh, uh, written down. And if, if you simplify this expression, of course, you cancel out the sigma, the surface charge densities, and you will have these two terms, the addition of these two terms. One is d1 divided by k1a epsilon 0 and d2 divided by k k2a epsilon 0. But if you look at closely what this expression is, a times epsilon zero divided by d1 is nothing but the capacitance of a capacitor which has thickness d1. And if you multiply this by k1, then this capacitor is uh, having 
a, a dielectric between the plates uh, which has dielectric constant k1. So this, this is just 1 over c1 and this is just 1 over c2 where in the second case we have a parallel plate capacitor which has thickness d2 and in between the plates we have the uh, material k2, material dielectric constant having a uh, dielectric constant k2 and well this is uh, the total um, capacitance, the equivalent capacitance is just expressed as the sum of these two uh, inverse capacitances then you will see, uh, you will recognize that this is nothing but uh, the total equivalent capacitance of this configuration is nothing but having two capacitors which are serially connected to each other, right? So uh, this expression is the uh, uh, finding the uh, uh, total capacitance which are uh, uh, serially connected to each other. Then, and this configuration acts like as if we have two different capacitors with two different uh, thicknesses and two different uh, dielectric materials, they are connected in series. Okay, so this is our end result. Well, if you had not two different materials, but three three different materials, which are D1, D2, and D3 as the thicknesses of the materials, and they are of course sandwiched, they are parallel on top of each other, then you would have one over C1 plus one over C2 plus one over C3. So you you will apply the same same trick, and you first have to calculate the total potential difference, and this will be E1 D1 plus E2 D2 plus E3 D3, and whatever the number of uh, uh, dielectrics inside, uh, which are sandwiched between the plates, then you will have uh, a capacitance which are serially connected as many uh, dielectrics as you have inside uh, between these two plates.